Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday night service here at Faith Family Church of God. I'm so glad that you are here with us tonight. What an awesome service that we had this morning. So very thankful, as always, for the way God moves in our services. Um, before we get started tonight with the continuation of our Sunday night series, let's have a word of prayer. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, God. Thank you, Lord, for the answered prayers, Lord God, the testimonies that we're hearing, God, in different people's lives, Lord God. Thank you, God, that you are faithful even when we're faithless. Sometimes you're still faithful all the time to us, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in each and every person's life. Thank you for what you're going to do, God. And we trust and believe, God, right now in the name of Jesus that any person watching this feed right now, whatever need they have, God, that it will be met according to your will and for your glory, whether there's spiritual uplifting, physical healing in their bodies, God, from sickness, from disease, financial blessings, God, emotional healing, God, healings in marriages, homes, families, whatever the case is, God, we trust and we believe for each and every need to be met according to your will and for your glory. Bless this service tonight, Lord God. Bless and anoint me as your messenger, God, to preach what you have for us tonight, God. Lord, and open our hearts, our minds, and our ears and our souls to receive the word that you have, Lord God. Let us take it, Lord, and grow it. Lord, use it to grow us, Lord God, stronger and closer to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, last week, Sister Brenda talked about how Saul tried to give David his armor, but the armor didn't fit because David hadn't tried that particular armor out before. It was not made for him. Instead, David reached into his shepherd's bag and use what he was equipped with. That's what we're talking about again, this part two, to reach in the shepherd's bag. If you watched last Sunday night service, um, you know that we started this series called Reach Into the Shepherd's Bag, and we're going to be going over this for the next several Sunday nights in the Armor of God series. But we talked about how we need to keep ourselves girded or clothed in God's truth as she began the series on the Armor of God last week. See, the belt of truth holds many things that are essential in our arsenal of weaponry as a child of God, and it offers protection from the attacks of the enemy. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the next piece of the armor of God that we should always keep ourselves girded with, and that is the breastplate of righteousness. So, what was a breastplate like back then? Well, in Roman times, the breastplate went from the neck all the way to the hips and completely around the body, so that even the backside of a soldier or warrior was protected. It was either made of hard leather, metal, or bronze. And see, the breastplate is an important piece of armor because it protects two of the major organs in the human body. It protects the heart and the lungs. Here's the thing, though. The breastplate had loops or buckles on the bottom of it that attached it to the belt. If the belt was loosened, the breastplate could slip right off. See, Everything hinges on the truth of God's Word. Everything. That's what it boils down to, is the truth of God's Word. Without truth, righteousness cannot stand. God's truth is the only solid foundation on which we can stand and base our life and our walk with God on. And with truth comes righteousness. Now, the breastplate that Paul is referring to is a spiritual breastplate that covers our spirit and our soul, that's what the devil is really after. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3-5 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, bringing every thought into captivity, to the obedience of Christ. See, you are strong. If you did not know it, you are strong because God made you to be that way. You have strength inside of you, whether you realize it or not. It just has to be awakened. You have to realize your potential in God. But see, because of our potential, because of our strength, because we are children of God, the devil is attacking us left and right. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to attack your righteousness. He wants to destroy you any way that he can. 
And see, but the breastplate of righteousness is one of the many essential pieces in the armor of God that we must have equipped at all times. The breastplate we're talking about is God's righteousness because our righteousness alone is as filthy rags. That means it's not worth much. It's not pure. It's stained. It's bloody. As Isaiah 64 and 6 says, thank God for his righteousness because without it, we wouldn't be fit for the kingdom of heaven. God's righteousness is this. Perfect love and grace that helps us to deny the temptation and sin that Satan has set up for us is to deny all of that and to follow God's plan for our lives. Isaiah 59 verses 16 and 17 says, He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness it sustained him, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. God knew that because of sin from the very beginning, we needed a savior because our righteousness was as filthy rags, yet again, stained with sin. We couldn't get it out ourselves. We could do nothing about it. So because of humanity's never-ending sin cycle, and if you read through the Old Testament, you see how God's people would come to repentance. They would glorify God, then they'd fall back into sin again over and over, and the cycle just kept repeating itself. That is exactly what's happening in the world today. But because of humanity's never-ending sin cycle, God provided salvation through Jesus. And because of Jesus' sacrifice and the salvation he gives, we can be clothed in his righteousness. Amen? Even Jesus, when he was here on earth, he was tempted by the devil every day. He was tempted by the devil to see if his righteousness would stand or if he would give in to temptation and let the devil win. So Jesus had to walk in his righteousness, which is God's righteousness. As we said, the breastplate of God's righteousness covers our spiritual being. Satan is always trying to attack our spirit man, and he will use whatever means necessary to hit us where it really hurts and where it would deal the most damage to us. This is why God gives us his righteousness to be clothed in, to withstand the attacks from the enemy. And there are two kinds of righteousness. We'll, call, we'll talk about those. The first is imputed righteousness. That means righteousness bestowed upon us, given to us. That is the result of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This is a result of Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection from the grave for you and for me. Well, why did we need God's righteousness? Again, we reference Isaiah 64 and 6. We are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. That means because of our sin, we get, we're easily blown away. We are righteous within ourselves. Only God is righteous, and because he is only righteous, the only way we can be righteous is through God. But because Jesus took our place by living the life we should have lived and dying the death that we deserve to die, he offers that covering of righteousness to block out the devil's attacks on our hearts and our souls. Thank you, God, for Jesus' sacrifice and his righteousness. Thank you, God, for your righteousness. When we are saved, we are immediately clothed in the righteousness of God. That's that imputed righteousness. But even though this righteousness is granted to us when we're first saved as a child of God, we are still encouraged to put on this righteousness every day. That is an active thing to do. But righteousness doesn't mean just saying a prayer once and going on with our lives as though nothing has changed. Righteousness and justification also comes through a constant commitment to Christ. Sanctification, a word that's not, very, not heard of very much anymore. Sanctification, the act of God shaping us to become more like him. We're dying to ourselves every day. A little bit more of our fleshly selves die every day. 
This happens over a lifetime, and that leads us to the second kind of righteousness. The second kind of righteousness being practical righteousness through sanctification. In other words, doing right, doing good works, maintaining a good reputation, and maintaining pure and good character as a child of God. This righteousness also involves making a choice to dive into God's Word every day and spend time with God every day. Oh, you know, People say, oh, well, there they go again, talking about spending time with God every day. You, you got to read your Word every day. How, do, how in the world do I have time to read my Word every day? I've got life. Life happens. I've got a job. I've got school. I just can't find the time. Well, let me tell you, you need to make time because the Word of God is alive and everything we need to know about life is within the pages of that Bible. You need to read God's Word every day. You need to study it, and you need to know it and apply it to your everyday life. Because 1 John 3 and 7 says, Little children, let no one deceive you. Because guess what? The devil is out to deceive you. And if you don't know the Word of God in your heart and in your mind, the devil can easily deceive you because he'll take what little bit that you know what little truth of it that you know, and he'll sow a lot of lies into it, twists it around until you get not the true form of the word, but just an alternate version, a twisted version, if you will. But 1 John 3, 7 again says, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Again, this is talking about those who are denying the teachings of God, trading them for their own self-righteous living, were, they were claiming to know God, yet they were living in unrighteousness. So let no one deceive you. That's why you need to know the Word, because if you know the Word, you know God. True believers practice righteousness and righteous living because the one in whom we believe and he who lives in us is righteous. God's righteousness is revealed in his children through our conduct. But righteous conduct doesn't necessarily produce righteous character. But it reveals its presence within us as well as the righteousness of God within us. This is why it's important that we read that Bible because it contains everything we'll ever need to know about whatever situation we may face and how we should face it. It tells us how we should react emotionally. It tells us how we should think how we should speak, and it tells us what to do in all manners of confrontations and situations the devil can ever throw at us. It is spelled out all within the pages of the Bible. B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. It is our guideline. It is our manual to our everyday life. That's why it's important we read the Bible so that we know it. And again, it's why it's, it's important that we pray that we communicate with God every day and allow Him to communicate with us. Prayer is more than just giving our requests to God, acting like He's a genie in a bottle, that we rub the bottle, and when He comes out and He grants us our wishes and goes back in. No, prayer is more than just that. Prayer is thanksgiving to God, giving thanks to God for all that He's done for you, and then prayer is you talking to God. Yes, you can make your request made known to Him, but prayer is, is a two-way communication. It's when we allow God to talk to us as well. We'll talk, but then we need to spend some time listening to God because it is through prayer that God will reveal to us what we need to do within ourselves to draw closer to Him. It is through prayer that God will reveal His purpose for you in your life. It is through prayer that we will find the strength in God to go about our day every day. It is through prayer that we will find the courage to stand up in this world that has forgotten God and be able to shout, let me show you how I get back to God. You've drifted away, but God is still there and he loves you. Let me show you just how much God loves you. Let me show you what you need to do to avoid certain destruction across all nations. Let me show you how to get back to God. It is through prayer that we will grow in the righteousness of God every day. And it's important to watch what we allow the eyes and ears of our souls to see and to hear. Remember that saying, garbage in, garbage out? If you allow yourself to watch or listen to negative, gloomy music, negative television, cursing, 
pop culture, whatever, that is all you will ever focus on. And eventually that will be all you will ever spew out of your mouth. But that's why Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and you received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. That is exactly why we need to watch what we listen to and watch with our eyes and our ears. And it's important that we watch our tongue and we speak life and positivity into the world instead of letting the world speak to us and get us down and influence us to speak death and negativity over the world. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The Bible in the book of James says that a spring cannot spew forth sweet and bitter water. We can't say that we love God and then talk and act differently. No, no, no. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. A lot of people may know about this scripture somewhat, but they want to forget about it because they get in their emotions. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. This means absolutely no curse words and no slanderous talk and gossip. If you want a scripture right there to talk to your family and friends about that says you cannot curse and be a child of God, this is the one. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Because we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God and we cannot serve the devil. And if we are spewing poison out of our mouths and cursing and talking bad about everybody else, then we are not serving God. We are serving the devil in that moment. We are supposed to have pure communication, uplifting communication, praising others. You know, we're not perfect. Nobody is ever perfect. But when somebody has a fault or slips, it's not, we're not to judge. We're not to cast them down. We are supposed to go and help lift them back up and show them that God loves them still. And we're supposed to speak good about them, speak life into them. As we do these things, as we read our Bible every day, as we pray, and as we watch our tongue, as well as our actions, I'll throw that one in there as well, we will grow in God every day. And then when we encounter the temptations and doubts in the world, we will be equipped to stand against them and throw them aside. And as we do these things, God will raise us up as a mighty army for him, burning with zeal and passion, who will not be afraid to stand up for biblical principles and holy, righteous living. And we will be an army the devil cannot stand against. But we must know that our actions determine how strong our breastplate of righteousness really is. If you follow God, if you pray every day, sincere prayer throughout the day to God, open communication between you and him. If you read his word every day and do these things that we're talking about, you will have a strong, thick breastplate of God's righteousness. But if you neglect to follow God, if you neglect his voice, if you neglect to pray, if you neglect to read his word, and you neglect to spend time in his presence every day, you will have a weaker, thinner breastplate of righteousness to protect you, and you will be more apt to fall to temptation, more apt to fall into sin, more apt to believe the lies the devil tries to sow into your life. Well, how do we use the breastplate of righteousness? First, by turning to God when we face temptation. James chapter 4 and verse 7 calls us to submit ourselves to God. If we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Whenever we encounter temptation, we need to turn to God. We don't need to try and face it ourselves because if we try to do anything within ourselves, we will fall. But with God, all things are possible. When you encounter temptation, we must follow the two things in this order 
first submit to God by abandoning our selfish pride. Submitting to the Lord involves putting on the whole armor of God, which is why we are in the middle of this series, to learn about each piece of the armor. And this armor involves everything from placing our faith in Him to immersing ourselves in the truth of God's Word. Second, we must resist the devil and any temptation that he throws our way. Instead of just giving in to the first glimpse of temptation, we actively try every day and we pray every day to keep out of sin and temptation. Then, the devil will have no choice but to flee. For we belong to God. We are his, his children, his creation, his masterpiece, his love. You are his. And the devil cannot do anything to you that God won't permit. So when you resist the devil, the devil has to flee. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. In the scripture, Paul provides a word of comfort. He tells us that the different temptations we all go through are not just unique to us. Sometimes that's, that's the devil's best lie in temptation is that we are the only ones going through this particular thing at this particular time. We cannot talk to anybody about it because people are going to look down on us because they don't know what we're going through. They don't know what we're facing. That is a lie straight out of hell from the devil. Everybody goes through the same temptations. Everybody experiences temptation. Everybody has temptation, and everybody is faced with the choice of what to do in those times at some time or another, in one form or another. God, though, is so good that he will not let us experience anything that he has not prepared us for. In other words, guess what? He knows you have the strength to resist because he created you, and if he created you, he knows every part of you, and he knows he made you to be strong in him. You may not know that you're strong, but you are strong because you are made by the creator of all things. He who has all the power, all the glory, all the strength, he's the God of all things. He created you. You are strong in the power of God's might. He gives us all the grace and power to resist and endure all temptation. How do we use the breastplate of righteousness? By guarding our hearts against the devil's schemes. The breastplate, again, protects our heart, our most vital organ. In a Christian understanding, our heart is the source of life. Even in our human form, our physical bodies, our heart is the source of life. Without our heart, blood cannot go to our toes, our fingers. It cannot go to our brain. Without the heart, everything dies. Satan is the source of death. But if we put on the breastplate of righteousness, we avoid the blows that will lead to spiritual death that come from sin. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17 says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. The only consistent way to overcome sinful desires of our human fleshly nature is to live step by step, day by day, in the power of God and the Holy Spirit as He works through us and our spirit, our soul walking each moment by faith in God's Word, again, studying His Word, to, under the Spirit's control, assures us absolute victory over the desires of our sinful nature. The potential of the flesh 
which the devil uses against us. The devil knows how to push your buttons. The devil knows how to tempt you exactly, and he knows what makes you tick. And the potential of the flesh should never be underestimated. Given free reign, the devil and the flesh will direct our choices, making us do what we know we shouldn't do. This inner conflict between the flesh and the spirit is very, very real. This is why we must spend time in prayer and in God's word every day and ask God to strengthen us in our weaknesses and help us to resist the devil every day. The Bible says that when we are weak, God is made strong. God is our source of strength. God is our protection. God is our shield. God is our righteousness. But again, we must pray, we must read God's word every day, and we must actively do everything we can every day to surround ourselves with the presence of God and protect us from the devil's evil schemes. How do we use the breastplate of righteousness? By avoiding what may ensnare us. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus advises removing every temptation to evil, no matter what the cost. Because if we allow temptation to drag us into sin and evil as we die in sin, then we lose our life. And what good would that do us anyway? We know what can trigger the sins that we personally deal with. So why do we allow ourselves to be surrounded by those things? Maybe it's a certain place, a certain group of people, a certain activity. No matter what the case we need to avoid, if possible, anything that can entice us to sin. If it's in your house and you know it's going to cause you to sin, throw it out. If it's a certain group of people that you know you're going to end up going with and sinning with, get away from them. Whatever you have to do to remove yourself from the temptation, do it. Get in the presence of God. Get around those who will lift you up. Get around like-minded Christians who will support you, who know what you've been going through, and they will be with you every step of the way. Be in church every Sunday. And if they offer in-person services more than one day a week, be in church every time that you can. If they're not in person every service, be online every time that you can. Surround yourself with the presence of God. Surround yourself with the Word of God every chance that you can. Sometimes this may make us the odd man out and may make us a killjoy or a loser to the world and to our friends, but we have our spiritual walk at stake. And what's, what's even more important, your soul is at stake. The body is temporary. The body dies off, but your soul is everlasting. So your soul is at stake. And when our body dies, we'll go one of two places, heaven or hell. And I hope and pray to God that everybody who can, can go to heaven. But it's better to avoid something that can pull us away from God than to compromise our spiritual safety. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 says, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. In this instance, the word pursue is a command to hunt or chase after these qualities. These qualities we just listed are good character qualities, and they are what God is. God is righteousness. God is, of course, godliness. God is faith. God is love. God is patience, and God is gentleness. Love, patience, and gentleness are also fruit of the Spirit, showing that we are of God. We should pursue righteousness every day with everything in us. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Remember how we said that Jesus was tempted while here on earth? In every way, it says in every manner that we could ever be tempted, Jesus was tempted. Christ's suffering on earth included temptation. He experienced the lure of sin, but he never surrendered himself to it. 
you have that same power. Jesus knows what it's like to be tempted, so he knows how to help us who are being tempted every day. And because he was tempted in every way that we will ever be tempted, we can always go to God and seek his help, his strength, and his guidance through everything that we face. And you can rest safely in the arms of God and resist that temptation. Hebrews 11.25 says, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. While we will experience hardships in life, especially when we follow after God, because the devil will always be after us, wanting our souls, because if he can't be with God, nobody can. But see, it's better to seek God's righteousness and to try to live righteously every day, following in God in the path that he has for us and be rewarded with an eternity in heaven rather than enjoying a short time of sin and worldly pleasures here on earth and then having to live in an eternity of torment and hell, wishing we'd have done differently. It's important to always clothe yourself in the righteousness of God. Remember, we said, yes, that we have that righteousness that's granted to us once we are saved, but remind yourself every day, I need to be clothed in God's righteousness day by day, hour by hour, and pray to God. Say, God, I can't do this myself. I can't do this alone. If I try to do it within myself, I know I'm going to fall because I'm human. But God, I know that I can do all things through you who gives me the strength. So God, strengthen me every day. Keep me safe in your arms every day. And when temptation comes against me, when the devil comes against me and tries to push my buttons, help me, God, just to come running to you Seek shelter in your arms, God. Wrap me in your righteousness. Help me to keep focused on you and your word so that I will not fall to temptation and I won't fall back into sin. That's all it takes, praying that every single day and seeking to do the right thing every day, the godly thing every day. Clothe yourself in the righteousness of God and let your goodness and righteousness shine through your works and your character, etc. Because when the devil tries to tear down your reputation and your witness by spreading lies and rumors, and he will, just like when we keep truthful with ourselves and others, when you remain righteous in God and righteous through your actions and words, deeds, your character, people will be able to see you for who you really are, a child of God who is pure, who is righteous and loving and steady in all your ways, keeping your witness alive as a child of God. Therefore, always keep yourself clothed with his righteousness. And as we close, we need to reach into the shepherd's back and keep that breastplate of righteousness attached to our belt of truth. We need to guard our hearts from the influence of the enemy and of his devices. When we wear the breastplate of righteousness, much like the Romans' breastplate when they went to war, when we put on the righteousness of Jesus, we are protected on every side just like the actual breastplate for the Roman soldier. Jesus told Peter that the devil desired to sift him as wheat. That means that the devil is going to come at us with everything he can, everything that he knows that we're weak against. He's going to push every button that he knows will try, and, and he will try to make us fail and fall back into sin. Any way he could attack and destroy him with words, however, he's going to try and do that. 
We're told that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He would love to destroy you and me, and he would come at any angle, any means necessary to do it. But we, as children of God, are covered by the righteousness of Jesus. Life may have bumps. We may find ourselves in situations we may not rather be in. We might face ups and we face downs. But we can rest assured that God's righteousness is tried and true. Jesus has overcome the world, and anything we ever face, he has already defeated. So yes, put on the breastplate of righteousness and surround yourself with the belt of God's truth every day and just watch what God will do in your times of trouble. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, God. Thank you, God, just for your righteousness, God, because our righteousness was as filthy rags, God. And we thank you that you loved us enough that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for us, God, that when we were sinners, while we were still sinners, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. He who knew no sin became sin and dwelt among us, died on the cross for us, that we might become your righteousness, God, that we can be clothed in your righteousness, white as snow, Lord God, that we can have that promise of eternity in heaven with you one day, that we can be protected from the attacks of the devil. We can be protected from everything he throws against us, Lord God, because of your righteousness. Lord, and we just ask God right now in the name of Jesus that when temptation comes our way, God, that we would just find ourselves in the shadow of your wings, Lord God, that we would go running to you, Lord God, and that you would cover us again in your righteousness, God. You would strengthen us, God. Help us to not fall into temptation. Help us to resist that temptation and to resist the double that he would flee. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, whoever's watching right now, whoever's facing hard times in their lives, God, whoever's facing temptation in every corner, Lord God, everywhere they turn, Lord, we rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus and we declare he is a liar, the truth is not in him and he has no power over them right now in the name of Jesus. We declare, God, that you would just cover them in your righteousness, cover them in your love, your grace, and your mercy. We rebuke that enemy in the name of Jesus, God, and declare that he is defeated in Jesus' name, God, and that you have the victory, Jesus. You have the victory, God. Lift them up out of the pit, Lord God. Lift them up out of that dirty righteousness, Lord God, that self-righteousness. Lift them up out of the world, Lord God, and just cover them, shower them, God, with your grace, your love, and your mercy. Lord, forgive them, God, and just clothe them and whiten your righteousness, Lord Jesus. And help us, God, just every day, every day, every day to seek after you, to read your word, to pray every day. And to constantly put on your righteousness. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And we give you thanks for the word. Amen. Remember, the next few Sunday nights we'll be continuing to cover the Armor of God series. We've already covered the Belt of Truth and the Breastplate of Righteousness. So keep tuned in on Sunday nights to... Continue with us as we discover more about the armor of God because we have to have the full armor on in order to have the full protection of God and His grace. But remember as well, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock is our prayer time. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, send it into our Facebook page. Um, send it into Pastor, Sister Brenda, or myself in any way, or Sister Marsha um, in her groups or However, you need to send those requests or praise reports and get those into us tomorrow so that we can gather them together and we can rejoice with you over what God has done and we can meet together in prayer and come expecting great things to happen. And then on Tuesday night, 6.30, Sister Marcia Arrington will be bringing the word for our youth and you do not want to miss it. You know, you, you don't want to miss any services, but you do not want to miss this Tuesday night, especially all of our youth and any youth who may be interested in watching, anybody for that matter, 
You do not want to miss this coming Tuesday night. She has a special word from God that she has shared with me, and it is going to be an awesome word. And then remember, on Wednesday nights at 630, Pastor brings the um, adult Bible study. And of course, it's for all ages as well. So tune in, because he always has a great word from God. And I always enjoy listening and gleaning from these lessons. Love you all. Be blessed. Have an awesome week. In Jesus' name, amen.